joining us right now, uh, I really enjoyed his article that he just wrote about The Magnificent Seven, and not just because it's one of my favorite films, the original. I also enjoyed Fuqua's remake, but I love the original. Uh, Magnificent Seven, talking about American business. Stephen Moore, who is the senior economist at Freedom Works, he also is a former Trump economic advisor. He joins us on Skype now. And I wanted, Stephen, first off, I thought this was brilliant. I thought that the way that you, the, the way that you framed this piece was brilliant. And I just want to share that with the audience because he talks sure. about how nothing exemplifies America's tech industry dominance more than the Magnificent Magnificent Seven stocks, Amazon, Apple, Google, Meta, Microsoft, NVIDIA, Tesla, and they single-handedly account for nearly all of the gains in the stock market this year. And he adds that, which is to say we as American shareholders who own them have a net worth of nearly $10 trillion. They're not Japanese or German or Chinese. They're American. And yet, they're, and I love it, you say they're the GM, the Standard Oil, the J.P. Morgan, all of that of our time. And they're not getting their uh, – the, Washington uh, – it's like they don't, uh, as you say, like Rodney, Rodney Dangerfield said, they don't get any respect. And it's true. They really are denigrated. Talk to me about this. Hi, Dana. Good to be with you. Thanks so much for having me. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. So, uh, you know, my wife does our investing. And so she, she put a lot of money into NVIDIA at the beginning of the year. And she's just dancing a little chick right now because that, that company is just surging. And all of these companies, though, you know, you mentioned NVIDIA, you have mentioned Apple, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, and others. And they have been so amazing. They're the high flyers. In fact, this year in the stock market, well more than half of the gains and almost three quarters of the gains have been attributable to those magnificent seven. So it's really um, for anyone with a 401k plan or anyone with a retirement plan, or if you just invest individually, these stocks are carrying the market and you're talking about trillion dollar companies and um, it's great. As you said, these are American companies. Isn't it wonderful, Dana, that the companies that are leading the way on the new technologies, and we hope that happens also in the artificial intelligence and robotics regime, are American companies. They're not Chinese. They're not German. They're not Japanese. They're made here in America. And look, I don't like the politics. I don't think you probably do either right. of some of these companies. You know, I, I don't like the fact that they discriminate, discriminate against conservative voices like yours and mine. But if you just look at what they're doing for the economy, it's amazing. It is. And I think that there's like an I think some of the offset is that, you know, we'll get more people who are like minded into those companies as well. I like the idea of, you know, kicking down the castle door and taking it over from the inside, talking to our friend like Stephen that. Moore. You you mentioned, too, way, that that's, that's, that, that's happening a little bit. You yeah. know, we as conservatives have really been put, putting pressure on these companies because they have been discriminating and, and trying to, uh, you know, close down conservative voices. And, and, and you know, now we're starting to really see more fair treatment. I mean, look what happened, obviously, with um, Elon Musk buying uh, Twitter. And mm -hmm. so we do have options now that, that didn't really exist before. We need to build great social media companies on our on the right as well. And that's a big challenge. That's why shows like yours are so important with the voice that you give. You also get into, which I think is a very important point, because there's, you know, the, some of the uh, monopolistic behavior that these companies yeah. engage in. I mean, I think there's a difference in adopting some of the behaviors and then engaging in full on pushing a monopoly in a particular market. Talk to us a little about that as well, because there is certain things that happen in business. It just happens as the nature of business. So, first of all, one of the great myths of American history is that, re remember uh, in, the, in the textbooks, you read about this, the quote, robber baron? Yes. You know, the Henry Fords and the J.P. Morgans and the, uh, the people who really, Standard Oil uh, mm -hmm. and, and uh, those people. Well, you know, guess what? It turns out they weren't robber barons. They built America. You know, how is it that we let some of our greatest entrepreneurs who created literally hundreds of thousands of millions of jobs and created the rail industry, the oil and gas industry, the banking industry, uh, you know, all of these, somehow they were they were portrayed as evil people. Now, I'm not saying they were sane, but, you know, they re really created America, American industry back uh, 100 years ago. And so now we have this new wave of great entrepreneurs, you know, people like Bill Gates and people like Steve Jobs and people like Elon Musk, and they're being treated like they're monopolists when, in fact, the most amazing thing, both, but this is similar 100 years ago to today. Uh, they kept saying, oh, gee, Henry Ford, he's a monopolist. J.P. Morgan, he's a monopolist. Uh, you know, the steel industry people are monopolists. Guess what? The prices of all those things fell. And what those entrepreneurs did was make those goods and services like cars available to middle-class Americans. 
Well, that's exactly what's happened with these technology companies. They're not driving up prices, they're driving down prices. I mean, my God, Google, you could search, do a search on Google for free. Uh, his great piece, The Magnificent Seven, talking about these, you know, these big titans of American business. I always thought that that was such a, a sneaky Marxist trick to get everyone to sort of turn on American business successes. Yes. It yeah. really was. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. You know, when we, this is America that was, became the richest country in the world because we have free market capitalism and we have great innovators and great entrepreneurs, uh, you know, that uh, just think of someone like Steve Jobs. I mean, he had this vision of, I wouldn't be doing this interview with you right, right now for, for Steve Jobs, right? I mean, he created, he had this vision that every American would have this little device in their hand and you could do video, you could do music, you could do, uh, you know, phone calls, all these things, you know, 30 years ago, who would have even imagined that? And so, you know, these are people who are, and this is, look, isn't it amazing that so many of the great inventions of the last hundred years, they came from American know-how and ingenuity. And, and I love that about America. And I want to see us lead the world in the next hundred years, not I, China. I think that's a great point, uh, talking with Stephen Moore. I also think that uh, particularly our allies, people who are like-minded with us, I mean, and I we completely share the same opinion, particularly on suppression of conservative speech. But I always, I don't want to get too ahead, too over my skis either and get to the point of denigrating an American business, because some of these companies like Facebook, you know, like Meta, you know, they they didn't they didn't conform to China's request to participate in their market. And as a result, they're banned. I mean, China has their own, you know, Facebook Meta equivalent over there. And I think that's, you know, for for all the problems and I definitely have problems with them. I know you do as well. To me, that's, you know, OK, I get that. You know, maybe I don't totally hate you, Meta, but because that's a good thing. I, I feel like we we don't want to get to the point where we're denigrating American capability too much because I feel like that's bait. It feels like we're being okay. baited in a way. Yeah. So it's a really good point you're making. So, you know, when, when you and I first got started in this industry, remember it was Walter Conkright and you know, CBS and ABC, NBC, you know, there were only a few media outlets, right? There weren't shows like this <laughs> that we're doing right now. Uh, and so what's happened is this proliferation of social media. And then the irony is, yes, some of these companies try to uh, quiet our voices, for example, is there any way that Donald Trump could have been elected without social media? He he was probably one of the greatest users of social media. It's so amazing that most of the uh, hottest websites out there and so on and social media channels are on the conservative side, not on the liberal side. We use it now. There are you know some pretty bad sites out there on the left. But we, we have ways of getting our voices heard now that we never did before. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree with, agree with you on this. So this is a fabulous piece, and I, do, I wanted to have you on to talk about it. You do know that there is a little bit of irony, a Magnificent Seven, because in the, uh -huh. I remember the ending of it. Five of them <laughs> didn't meet the best end. So I hope that that's only, not— Only, yeah. only two of the seven survived. <laughs> so but, I hope know. that's where it parts. By the way, I did, not, I did not invent the term Magnificent Seven. That's been out there for months, but— but they are magnificent and we want to see them continue to prosper. And by the way, when we, when you and I do this show five years from now, it'll probably be seven different companies, yeah. you know? I would imagine so. I would imagine so. Stephen Moore, thank you so much for joining us. I hope you have a wonderful Christmas and a happy new year. Yeah. And thanks for this great piece. Sure. Good to talk with you. Thanks.